Welcome to CSET Biology ECP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. You can find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. Today we're going to be looking at decomposers and a digital or both of which falls or saprophytic nutrition. Now, saprophytic nutrition refers to a type of nutrition in which organisms feed on dead and decaying organic contents. Organisms that practice this type of nutrition are called saprophytes. These organisms are important as they recycle trapped chemical elements in the ecosystem. The group includes decomposers and detritivore. Here we have a piece of bread being decomposed or acted on by fungi. Woodlouse is a type of detritivore, earthworm type of detritivore, millipede a type of detritivore. Our fungi and bacteria they are responsible for the decomposition and they are referred to as decomposers. There we have a line showing the divide. Detritivores are large in size. They are really larger in size when compared to decomposers. They feed on dead and decaying organisms, breaking them down into smaller pieces. This helps to increase the surface area so a decomposer can complete the process of decomposition quickly. Example of these include wood lice, earthworm, millipede, sea cucumber, just to name a few. And these would have been familiar to a lot of persons. If you were supposed to look under your garbage pile, you'd find some wood louse once it's on the ground. Or if you were supposed to look in your compost heap, you'd find all three organisms, wood louse, earthworm, and of course, the millipede. Decomposers are microorganisms, bacteria, and fungi that feed saprophytically on dead and decaying organic contents. They use enzymes secreted from their bodies to break down organic remains into humus. So it's very clear here that the detritivores, the larger organisms, are going to be breaking down the remains first after which they would have increased the surface area then the decomposer would have acted on this matter being decomposed referred to as last year many students differed on their cxc exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness this year mr wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today. Refer to as detritus to bring it into that humus form. Now, this allows them to release carbon dioxide, nitrate, sulfate, and other inorganic nutrients to the environment. So it's very important to note here that the decomposers, their chief role is to cycle nutrient in the environment. They release the trap nutrient, the trap chemical element in organic remains. So they are responsible for cycling this nutrient. And these include our nitrates, our sulfate, for example. They get these released from the organism, carbon dioxide, through respiration, we are also adding to the environment. The process ensures continued reuse of nutrients uh, by organism. So the, uh, the, the trapped nutrient is not left in the organism when it passed away. It is broken down and again made available to other organisms. So we really don't have to go about and producing these things synthetically nature would have taken care of herself so we have a fungi and bacteria they are our decomposers they are responsible for cycling the nutrient they are responsible to ensure that there is continued reuse of a nutrient that there exists in the ecosystem humus is important as it improves soil structure it helps the soil to retain water, improve soil nutrient, improve drainage in poorly drained soil, and of course it increases water retention in highly drained soil. 
the decomposition process drives the production of biogas. So there we have them again. So we're going to be looking now at recycling of nutrient by decomposer, our cycling of these mineral ions, these trapped element. We're going to be looking at how this is done. So here we have some soil. You have the remains of a plant, the remains of an animal. It is in the soil, buried in the soil, on the soil, whichever. The next thing we're going to be having, we're going to be having our vegetables acting on it. After which, the decomposition process begins where decomposers are going to be acting on the organic remain. Now that they have acted on the organic remain, they are releasing mineral ions and, of course, gases. Now, we could look at carbon dioxide, which is released, and this comes from the process of respiration, and this carbon dioxide is used in the process of great photosynthesis. It's used in the process of photosynthesis. So it gets into the plant leaf via diffusion. Great. Now, the inorganic ions that are released from the organic remain would include nitrate and sulfate, and these are absorbed by the plant root to aid in the plant's development. So here we have carbon dioxide entering the leaf of the plant via diffusion in that process we refer to as photosynthesis. The cycle does not stop here. Now, the producer will be eaten by a consumer, and eventually, after some time, all organisms will face environmental resistance, which in some cases will eventually lead to death. Now, after death, we are going to be having decomposition again of the organic remain. And the cycle continues with the release of gas, carbon dioxide being used for photosynthesis, and of course the mineral ions that are released. These are going to be absorbed by the plant root and assist with making up that nutrient content to ensure that we have a healthy plant. This cycle pretty much shows the flow of the nutrient within the ecosystem and the role that the decomposers play, which are our fungi and bacteria. So we are seeing there the role, fungi and bacteria, they are the organisms that are responsible for the decomposition and the cycling of nutrients in the environment. They are responsible for releasing that trapped nutrient from the organic remains of organisms. Thanks so much for watching. I am Mr. Wilson from CSEC Biology TCP. You can find us online at tcpacademy.teachable.com. You can also find us on YouTube at CSEC Biology TCP. Join us on a Wednesday for live classes on YouTube. Find us at Mr. Wilson Live on YouTube. You've just watched the composers and the chitabor, another production from the TCP. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today.